Hi, this is Peter Rossi again uh, to talk to you about three-dimensional visualization. Uh, there's a very nice package which you can download into R called RGL. RGL right here, I'm highlighting it here. Um, and this package allows you to plot three-dimensional scatter plots as well as surface plots and all kinds of three-dimensional shapes like spheres, trapezoids, things of that sort. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate it using uh, to plot a scatter, three-dimensional scatter plot of the data set in multi, which is one of the data sets that we've been talking about in class. And I illustrated this in class as well. So let's just do that. Let's uh, load RGL, uh, attach uh, the multi data set, and then this command here, plot 3D, P1, P2 sales, basically plots um, them, the this three-dimensional data, remembering that in three dimensions, the coordinates are usually denoted X, Y, and Z. So X is P1, Y is P2, sales is Z. And you can see I'm using type equals S, and that will represent each point as a sphere, a little sphere. I'm making scaling it to 1.5 to make them slightly bigger than normal and making them, the, them green. So let's take a look at that plot. Let's run it. And RGL will bring up a separate device that's outside of uh, the RStudio environment. It's not a standard quartz or plotting device. This is actually an X11 window. Um, but you can see here is what's called the bounding box, this cube here. This, on this you can see the P2 axis here, the P1 axis here, which appears to be unlabeled, but it's actually labeled up here. So remember, P2 is a price, P1 is also a price. So I'm actually looking at the positive ortho, namely the positive values of x, that's x, positive values of y, and positive values of z from behind the, for the, the ordinate. Um, and I'm, here's the origin, the origin's right around here, right? And so what I can do is by uh, clicking and holding the click, I can rotate the box in order to visualize the orientation of the data. The data is not very um, understandable by just holding it in any one orientation, but you can see a very pronounced plant plane right here. You can see we're just skipping there. We're right looking at the cross section of this, the plane and we're moving it to see its uh, orientation. You can see its orientation is such that as for P1 fixed as P2 increases, sales goes up, it's climbing up this way. For P2 fixed, sales seem to decrease, although that's a little less evident, okay? So let's actually put the regression plane through this plot. So again, this is using that R philosophy by now, which we recognize, which is that we, we basically um, build up plots. So, okay, so in addition to the plot 3D command, there's a command called plane 3D. Again, you can look at the help file for, um, for, um, <clears throat> for the RGL package to see the many, many, what's going on here, why it's not, okay, excuse me. Uh, so let's go into RGL to see the many, many functions that are in RGL. I'm just looking at the ones that start with P and one of them is called uh, planes 3D, add planes. So there's planes 3D, okay. Um, the coordinate of the, the the, the way in which a plane, the equation of a plane is written AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals zero, where X is P1, Y is P2, and Z is sales. Because we run a regression of sales on it, that means C here is minus one, okay? So here's my regression. I'm gonna run that regression and fetch the coefficients, B0, B1, and B2, and plot the plane here using the RGL command plane. I'm also using the color light gray, which I like, but also you can see here, there is a, there is a parameter here called alpha. Alpha refers to transparency. So alpha equal is between zero and one. When alpha is equal to one, the plane is completely opaque. That means at any points that are underneath the plane, we would not be able to see if the plane is oriented facing us. So I've set 0.5 so that there is some transparency. So what that means is that points that are behind the plane when we're peering through the plane will appear somewhat shaded. So let's put that plane up on the plot. And here's the plot. You can see this light gray plane through it. 
And you can see also, you can see here these points here that are completely light green in color. These are on one side of the plane. You can see a few points that are completely darker green and some that are like a beach ball, half, half gray, half light green. You can see the points hanging in the plane. Right here I'm showing the plane on its little edge or its side. And you can see that this is actually a very tight fit. The points are squared of over 0.95. The points are very closely oriented around the plane, some more farther away than others. And you can now get a little bit better notion of the plane. You'll notice that the plane is torn off or, because what it's doing here is it's hitting the, what's called a bounding box. Okay, so it's actually, that helps you. So the plane in here is cut, has been cut essentially at this little, at this face of this cube here. The plane is, would be sticking out of it, so they literally cut it off. Um, so you can see its orientation. Its orientation is, is as, as, um, as P2 increases, given P1, you're going up the hill here, sales go up, which makes sense. P2 gets more expensive, you, the competing product gets more expensive, uh, you, your sales increase. It's a little harder to see the opposite, which is holding P2 fixed, right? What happens is P1 increases, so holding P2 fixed, I'm falling down the face of this plane. It's a little harder to see. So let's actually write, draw on the plane lines that correspond to what happens to sales when P2 is constant and you change P1, and similarly when P1 is constant and you change P2. So again, all I've done here in this little piece of the code here is calculate two, um, you know, all, you can always draw a line in any dimensions by two points on the line. So I've set P2 equals 8, I'm holding P2 equals 8, and I'm computing the Z values corresponding to the minimum P1 and the maximum P1. And down here, I have uh, used the command called lines 3D, which is obviously going to put a line through it. Similarly, I've done this by holding P1 constant and, and varying P2. So here I'm going from the min to the max of P2 and uh, painting another line, and the line of P, uh, showing what happens to sales when P1 varies holding P2 constant, it's going to be blue. The line that shows what happens to sales when P1 is constant and you vary P2 is, is going to be red. So let's plot those lines on, the, uh, on top of the plot. And here it is, hiding behind here. Okay, and so you can see, here's the blue line. So what is the blue line? Holding P2 constant. This is P2 at about, I think it's at 8, and then whole, and then varying P1 from its minimum to its maximum. And you can see what happens. It's, you can see sales going down, right? Similarly, if you fix P1 at 5, I believe, and that vary P2, you can see the inc it's increasing. So these are two representations of the derivatives, really, or partials. Uh, or pure effect of P1 and P2 from the fitted regression, right? So what I mean by pure effect, it means holding the other variable constant. Okay. All right, so I hope that's a little bit um, uh, about RGL and helps you understand what regression planes look like in more than one dimension when they're not lines, but they're a plane. There's all kinds of other stuff in RGL that allows you to plot surfaces and terrain maps and all kinds of stuff. Again, you can say demo RGL and it'll go through and demonstrate uh, the various uh, features. Um, so you can it'll demo, here is a, um, here's a three-dimensional histogram. Let's do that very briefly while we're here. And there's all these very, here's all the, there's a three-dimensional histogram. Here's a solid, and so on. Um, so I encourage you to play around with RGL. It's a very powerful routine. It's um, uh, and you can uh, capture screens from it. There is a capture screen, so you can capture it as a as a PNG file, uh, portable graphics file. Again, make your device window very large before you capture the screen, so that you'll get the maximum resolution possible. Something like this and then play with the orientation. Typically, if you want to show a three-dimensional thing uh, you, without the ability to interact with the plot, 
you're going to have to show several different orientations on the plot. So you might show this one and rotate it, say, a little bit to some other side and show that one and so on um, so that you can get a better feeling uh, for what it's like. It has all kinds of other three-dimensional graphics and capabilities. So particularly when you're showing solids or surfaces in three dimensions, it helps to shine a light on them. It gives you a greater sense of depth, depth perception. Um, so there is a feature for turning lights on from any given orientation. So I encourage you to explore it. It's extremely powerful just to give you a feeling for when uh, this sort of technology was just was would be would be a, a proprietary software and expensive graphics devices, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago. It would require a graphics workstation and all kinds of special so software. So here we are today uh, with uh, it at our fingertips. Okay, we'll talk to you later.